I don't see the point. We all know how it ended. The trouble you're referring to is really rather subjective, isn't it? You should know there was no trouble at first. That's not exactly true. I don't know why I call such chatter. Seven years? Seven years really isn't that much. I could tell you right now that if it was a man marrying a younger woman, no one would bat an eye. But this was the South. Conservative, God-fearing. One was expected to do what's proper. Traditional, respectable, I guess. But a woman marrying a man seven years her junior in a small-minded town like Monticello, well, <laughs> that was trouble. A genuine scandal. They were all so self-righteous. It was like being a cage bird. I could tell you, I was anything but traditional. But I was respectable. When Tom and I got married, scandalous or not, nobody missed it. Invites went out to everyone, everyone who mattered. <laughs> As God is my witness, I will survive this. If I have to beg, lie, or steal, ask God is my witness. I will. Honey, I don't know the lines. Oh, where will I go? What will I do? Who will take care of me? Well, frankly, my dear, um, quite frankly, uh, who cares? Do I still have to wear this mustache? Yes, you do, sugar, all day long. Uh, it's all wrong. The pavilion isn't anything like I asked it to be. And is it really too much to ask that our guests dress in the proper attire? Half of them aren't dressed anywhere I asked them to be. Pat, it's our wedding, and it's just fine. I just want everything to be perfect. Well, it is. Carl's name is my sister. I thought your niece was kidding. No time to turn around. Hey, Debbie, who's your date today? I lose track. <laughs> Where's your dress, Rachel? I thought it was just your mom and Tom. Well, you better figure something out, because she's already in a tizzy. Another 15 minutes, you would have right. missed the ceremony. Your mama and daddy are late, aren't they? They're a little late. Hi, though, Dan. You look nice. Make sure you stand on the, the, the step behind okay. her. My parents didn't show up. I can't believe they did this to us. Oh, sugar. We talked about this before now. We both agreed that we know certain people do not deserve a place at our table. We are not going to let it ruin it for us, are we? Hmm? Huh? <gasps> Finally! I'm Rachel. So... Oh, I'm sorry. You look stunning. Yeah, stunning. You like it? <laughs> it's wonderful, all of it. Well, me and Tom, we're just like two peas in a pod now. Hey, Phil. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, now watch y'all go uh, run and get changed. We're right about to take the photo. Oh, no. Pat, I'm, I'm sorry I were dressed. I thought it was optional. Well, I can go back into town and change. Well, well there's just not enough time. Rachel, you're the maid of honor. This is all planned out. Now, this is just going to ruin everything. Come on, come on. We'll, we'll hide you behind someone now. Come on, Phil. Why don't you hold on to Jim? Darling, would you would you be a sweetheart? Let me borrow your shawl. You look so gorgeous with that hat. I love it. Now, cover yourself up, OK? And Phil, why don't you squat down a little bit? Grandma, Grandma, come on. Uh, and Darlene, get closer. And Darlene, you too. I'm fine right here. Everybody turn around and get this picture. Dan, where are you going? All Stay right. down here. Yeah, okay. All right, come on in, everyone. Everybody facing forward. Okay. I know, it 
What is reality, I ask you? It's whatever we want it to be. Truth doesn't matter. It's what people believe. Perception is reality. You know what I mean? The smart people and the stupid people. Yeah. That donkeys. Donkeys. Oh. Hi. 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 What? Oh my God. That's a nice big boy right there. Oh, I just made a stay, that's all. James, keep well, the car running. I'll be right here. Pat. You okay? Tell me about Miami. Yes, I'm fine. Miami. Well. Oh, well, we never saw much of Miami. We never left our room. I don't want to hear this. Rachel, I'm telling you, you should have married a younger man. I mean, before 35, they're like stallions. After that, might as well throw them out the past. Okay, I'm not listening. And Tom, they should be greeting him. Mm. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. This place is finally up for sale. Oh, my Lord, can you imagine asking such a price? I have had my eye on this place for years. I just have this feeling in my gut I'm destined to live there. Come on, come on. Walter. Tom's here. Daddy, I was hoping we could talk. I'm not loaning any more money, Tom. I don't need money, Daddy. I've had a good job for six months now. Lunch and a clock, barely more than minimum wage. You call that a good job? Walter? I paid for his education. I got a right to my say. Enjoy your honeymoon? Yeah, we did. And how did you manage to pay for that? That's our business. Nothing in this town is your business. It's everybody's business when you run around with another woman, an older woman, while you're still married. How do you think that makes us look your mama and me? Angela and I were as good as split when I started seeing Pat. You know how Angela treated me. What I know is you made an oath under God in his name. And now your wife is trying to raise two kids on her own. Pat is my wife now, and I love her. Do you have any idea how much that hurt me? You and Mama not coming to my wedding? She dated half the men in Monticello before she finally settled on you. Come again? I want you off my property. You might let him talk to you that way, Mama, but I won't. Hi, Daddy. Hey, hey, hey Danny. Come here, Sarah. Daddy, Daddy, Mwah. Daddy. Hey, I'm going to come to your t-ball game Friday night, champ. You like that? He isn't playing t-ball. He doesn't have the right shoes. He can't afford to do half the stuff other kids can do. Angel, I just gave you money last week, more than the court even ordered. Well, it wasn't enough. I see what's her name running around with all them fancy clothes. You can afford that. Come here, baby. I suppose if I was her age, though, I'd need all the help I could get. Go on. Angela. Angela, I got a right to see my kids. No trouble, please, Tom. I'll see what I can do about a visit. Just leave. OK? Sell my car, we both use your truck, and then we can make some extra money by taking care of horses. We can't afford the down payment on the loan. Well, I thought about that, too. You know how your grandpa's been having a hard time with Nona ever since she's had the stroke? They sell their house. We use that as the down payment. They move in here with us. They have a whole wing that they can have all to themselves, and then we'll pay <laughs> them back as soon as we can. That'd be tight. I'll have to cut out other things. I'll do whatever it takes. 
is what I've always dreamed of. It's a very own tale. Hmm? Oh, just say yes. I learned the power of being a woman at a young age. My father left when I was three. I saw how men do. They want only one thing and they want it simple and easy. But a woman has wants too. I learned how to get what I wanted. Now, that may be unsavory to some, but I can tell you this. I never went without. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 thank you. Welcome to our house. Thank you. you keep pouring that. Get everyone home. The lady of the house needs a drink. Thank you. It's okay, isn't it, that we did this? Yes, of course it is. I'm glad we helped them buy this house, George. I think we're going to be very happy here. Thank you. For what? For 53 years. <laughs> sure. That's what I'm talking about to him. There he is now. Will you excuse me? Oh, of course. What are you doing here all by yourself? Pat, when I said to get a couple things for a housewarming, I didn't think we'd be entertaining the whole town. Oh, sugar, they're just a few of our friends. Uh, not half of them. Hell, why do we got to impress a bunch of folks we don't even know? <laughs> they know us. We're going to be the talk of the town. This town's got enough talk. No, oh, it's not a sound just like your daddy. Don't say that. Don't ever compare me to him. I just don't think we need to flaunt what we don't have. But we do have it. Look around. It's all ours. Mm. Now, you gonna come in and help me host this? Hey, sweetie. So Mama's really out about herself. Oh, yeah. Almost gave poor Tom a heart attack. Poor thing doesn't know what he's in for. What do you mean by that? Oh, you know, I mean... Tom's so simple, and your mother, God bless her, is anything but simple. Grab yeah. everyone's attention. Come on. Honey, come here. <clears throat> As you can all probably imagine, my lovely wife, Pat, is responsible for every piece of furniture, <laughs> artwork, drapes. Well, even the dust is in its proper place. <laughs> dust. A little something for our new home. What? I thought we'd name this state for your brother, Glenn. Oh. If you agree, of course. <laughs> That's just... Beautiful, of course. Well, this home, this evening, well, it's just everything I ever wanted. And having you all here, well, this is a good day. <laughs> Thank you for being here and sharing it with us. Welcome to Glenwood. <laughs> Come back, Lord. <laughs> No. 
out. No now. Come on. Go on home. Come on. You did a good, good job. Huh? That's right. We'll take a little ride later. Whoa, 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 whoa girl. Whoa, 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 girl. Come here. I've got Tom's father. Yes, I know who you are, Mr. Allenson. I apologize if I startled you. I just wanted to see for myself. See what? Well, my son is spending money he doesn't have. Your son, my husband, is finally living the life he deserves. Which you always seem so determined to ruin. Why is that? I want to show you something. Hey, baby. What's you doing? What happened? What's the matter? It was Walter. What did my daddy do? Grandma? Grandpa? You're not here. I was here alone. I was riding. And he was here. He is a sick man. He came after me. He came after me and he assaulted me. Daddy Walter. Why on earth they think they need to live with Tom is beyond me. They think the world of Pat. I just don't understand it. You have to tell me that? No, you don't think the world of anyone, Walter. Not even me, your own sister. Hmm. Are you insane? He assaulted my wife. He exposed himself. That's ridiculous. Were you on my property? Yes, I was. To have my say, because I know how this is going to end. I'm going to have to pick up the pieces like I always do ever set foot near my home, you ever touch my wife again, and I will kill you. Your wife is a liar. She's a damn whore. Everyone in town knows that but you. Tom! Tom! You're a sick son of a bitch. You're nobody. Call the police. What are they gonna do, arrest my daddy? It's Pat's word against his. He's a powerful man with powerful friends. Well, he's never had nothing but disrespect for Mama from the start. Pat, Pat, what is that? It's nothing. What is that? It's nothing. It's an infection, that's all. An infection from what? I, I, I don't know. It. I've had it a few times before. Seems to happen when I have stress. <sighs> Please don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Now I think it's best if we all just forget what happened today, hmm? Excuse me. Married 35 years, Caroline. I can read your mind. Just come out with it. Tom's a good boy. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm gonna take his side after what he accused me of doing. You believe that woman? No, Walter. But Tom's whole life, all he's ever wanted was your approval, and you've never given it. You didn't speak to him for a month when he quit going to church. Almost a year when he dropped out of college. You took Angela's side in the divorce. Just once, he wants you on his side. Any idea who might have done this to you, Mr. Allison? Yeah. Tom. Look, I know the two of you have had your troubles in the past, but you really think he'd try and kill you? He's desperate. 
He's broke. A reason enough. Dan? Grandpa? Everything all right? Walter and Carolyn's car got shot up down near Savannah. Dan says they're okay. What? Shot. Yeah, someone unloaded a 30 odd six item while they were driving out to the property. Oh, God. Now, listen, I'm gonna have to get you to come down and answer some questions for me. You understand, Tom? Yeah, Pat wants to have the family over for dinner tomorrow night. Uh, I'll be working late. Always work late when my family gets together. Hey, why are you so dressed up? This is your nice shirt. I wasn't going to tell you till I knew for sure, but I'm up for a promotion. Denver. Well, I don't want to move to Denver. My entire family's here. Exactly. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. No, it wasn't. I got to run. It wasn't nothing. Look, I know my sister is a bit eccentric, but she practically raised me when her mom and I. I can handle eccentric, Rachel. They border on crazy. I mean, have you ever wondered why Pat's daughter Susan moved away and doesn't speak to the family anymore? Doesn't that pique your curiosity? Hello. Hey, did Mama call you? No. Uh, what's wrong? Walter and Carolyn got shot at. They think it was Tom. What? I'll come by and pick you up. Okay. I told you we weren't within 50 miles of Savannah. We're on our way back from a horse show in Atlanta. Call the gas station. We stopped to fill up halfway. Mr. Allison, we have more than one witness who overheard you threaten to kill your father just a couple of days ago. I was angry. It was a figure of speech. Do you have any idea what that man did to me? He assaulted me on my very own property. And here you believe in everything he says as though his word was the gospel. That may very well be, but we are investigating a different crime here. Do you have any idea who Walter Allison is? This man has more enemies than you can shake a stick at. Treats everyone as though they're beneath him. Hey, Pat, you gotta understand. Which is exactly right? where he wants you to be so he could step all over you. So before this you start believing another word that he says, I suggest you dig under a couple more rocks instead of assuming his very own son would do something like this. Absolutely. Ma'am, I have seen plenty of family quarrels. And 99% of the time, it's always the guy that could never do a thing like this. What a ridiculous waste of time. Let's get out of here. Pat, Pat. What are they saying? Nothing much, as usual. Just spouting off, just trying to justify their own badges. Pat, sir. Major point about it. Major point, okay? Keep it down. Okay, so, uh, good news. We just confirmed your gas receipt. You weren't anywhere near Savannah at the time of the shooting. Hmm. Someone was at that gas station. Doesn't mean it was you. Seems like you got your mind made up. Either the rest of me or I'm going home. We'll be in touch. Let's go, girls. Come on, Pat. <sighs> That's the thing about people. Especially in a town like Monticello. Once they get their minds made up about something, there's no changing it. All it takes is one thing to turn your whole life upside down. My poor Tom. He had no idea what these people would do to him. Sugar? What you doing home? I got fired. Fired? What for? Fired? Why, why'd you get fired? Remember that bar fight I told you about four years ago? Someone called the head of HR. 
told him that I was arrested and spent time in jail. Someone. It wasn't just someone and you know it. I don't know that. Tom, people don't get fired for no reason. What's happened? Walter got Tom fired. We don't know that. God, you're so naive. That man's trying to ruin our lives. He's walking all over us. What do you want me to do about it? Hell, everyone in town thinks I took those shots at him. You wonder if I get a job within 50 miles of here. She's been like this all day. Do you feel nauseous? A little. So tired. Well, you have a fever. I know I'll make you some tea. A remedy my mama taught me. It's been passed down from the ladies in our family for generations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's Grandma? Better. Pat takes good care of her. She's a good woman, Tom. Fire in her belly, but nothing wrong with that. You're a lucky man. I don't know, Grandpa. Sometimes I feel like my luck's run out. It's hard to drag in the middle of all this. Son, your daddy's been a hard man his whole life. Not much chance for me to stay out of it. Look, don't let him put a value what you have here. He'll never understand it. Might make things difficult for a while, but he can never take it away from you either. Yes, sirree. Love the sounds out here. No matter what happens in the world, frogs and cicadas don't give a hoot's ass about our problems, do they? Sometimes I like to write letters. I find it more personal. Uh. Maybe I should get a job. Uh-huh. You've got enough stress. I don't want you working. Well, I gotta do something. I keep thinking that us getting married made things worse between you and your daddy. I don't care about that. Maybe your mama could help us. She tried. Well, she should try again. They're the only ones with the kind of money that can help us. I'm not going to go begging. We don't want to lose a house. What are you talking about? Well, my friend Diane, she's going with the guy who works at your daddy's law firm. And she says that Angela has secured a place in your daddy's will. How long before she convinces him she should get your entire share? Who cares about that stuff? Well, you should care. It's not just about the money. It's the principle of the thing and the respect. Besides, it's not just about us. Your grandma and grandpa, they've put out an awful lot to give us all this. I don't know. I think it's worth another try. Now you're going to tell it just like I, I told it. you. Mama? Mama, it's me, Tom. I know, I know, Mama. But I need to talk. This business with Danny and me, it's going to end. Can I come over? It's not up to him. OK. OK, Mama. Okay, bye. She said she'd talk to him. But I shouldn't call the house again. That's okay. That's good, huh? Scratch the bottom of the well, hasn't it? 
some honest wages and sell me, did you? Where's Tom? He didn't want to see you. He doesn't have a choice. I've come for my check. I can see what he meant now. He told me I was the first woman he'd ever been with, and it never made much sense till now. Well, you have had lots of practice. Pat, get in the house. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Nobody can help me now. He was your client. And put the you gun knew. down! I said put the gun down! Put the gun down! Put the gun down! You ruined my life, man. He ruined my life! Said I could really pull a gun. Oh, right there in broad daylight. Said he was gonna shoot him. <laughs> that was crazy. Look, you weren't hurt, Rachel. Yeah, I told that too. Oh, you should have seen him, Tom. He just stood there, didn't even flinch, like he thought he was invincible. Well, at least someone had the courage to confront the man. Where are you going? You can find your own ride home. Well, I didn't mean that, Tom. Don't leave. What's up, Dan? How you doing, buddy? Good. Oh, Pat. Oh, she'll be all right. You know Pat, she got a flair for the dramatic. I guess you take a look at something real quick. What's this? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Your father got in the mail a couple days ago. Probably a poor son of a bitch who went after him in front of Rachel. Yeah, no, he's in jail. Um, no. Postmark from Savannah. I told Walter I'd look into it, that's all. I haven't been to Savannah, Dan. That's all I need here. <laughs> you know, Walter's had a lot of land deals around there, so I'm not surprised to tell you the truth. Miracle, he's still alive. Woo! How about a little wager? What do you think? I'm broke. I'm broke. <laughs> it's all pro game too. Well, at least he made it home. I should have said those things I said. All this trouble with Walter has just about brought Tom to his knees. He really walks all over Tom, doesn't he? Sometimes I wish they had been killed. Mama. I <laughs> know that's a terrible thing to say. When Tom was little, Walter used to slap him in front of others. Not to hurt him, but to humiliate him. Well, Tom's too big to be slapped now, but Walter sure tries to humiliate him. I hate that man. It'll all be okay, Mama. Once they get to know you, it'll be like this never happened. I hope you're right. You're the only one I could tell these things to. Don't tell anyone. You promise? Especially not Rachel, God forbid. Am I hearing this right? You're confiding in me and not Rachel. Of course, why wouldn't I? Because I always thought you were closer with her than me. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Nothing ever comes between a mother and daughter. Don't you know that? Besides, you and me, we've always had more in common. Since when? Oh. Rachel seems to think that the world just falls into place, and, well, I guess it does for her. For you and me, we know it's not that easy. Sometimes you have to take what's rightfully yours, and you can't be afraid to do that. All these rich folk, with their fancy cars and their expensive clothes, nobody just handed that to them. They went after it. 
just went right out and took it. You understand? I think so. Good. You remember that. It's important. Thanks for the ride. Mm. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Hey, you okay? I'm sorry I walked out. I'm sorry too, Shul. It was all my fault. What you doing? I just wrote a letter for my mother. Came in the mail today. Dear Tom, Please don't tell anyone I wrote this letter. Come by on Memorial Day. Your daddy will be working. The neighbors will be in town for the fireworks. I'll be home. I want to help. Love mom, see? You're not taking their money. They'll have that over me forever. We need to talk to a realtor about selling the house. It's our only option now. No one is going to take this house from us, Tom. Why don't you get that through your thick skull? This isn't a home. It's a house of cards. This whole life we're trying to live is a charade. We could barely afford it when I had a job. So that's it, then? You're just going to give up? Let him win? It's not about winning or losing. We're broke. Don't you see? This is exactly what he wants. What he always does to you. You hear your mama's reaching out, and you're too pig-headed to even consider it. I've considered everything. Not everything, Tom. I will not live like everybody else. I will not be like everybody else. We are better than that. That's who I was when you married me. Depends what you got in mind. Oh, really? How about we take a walk? Where are we going? Well, you just have to wait and see. Hmm. Will you get some more beers, too? And some salsa? Yeah, I got your beer. <laughs> it's a surprise. Don't you like surprises? I do not like surprises. You know that. I uh, know, but you're gonna like this one. Baby, it's Memorial Day. I figured I'm gonna show you something that you'll never forget. Into my carriage, sir. Daddy, don't you you get that corner? You don't hear me. I'm so Such a good I never wondered you how just wanna love on my man. I'm just a good girl. Well, of the ball for you, baby, I got it all. Champagne and roses. Let's raise a toast to a good, good girl. Such a good girl. I got my hair up in curls, precious as pearls. Just a good girl. Where on earth did they go? You know, Mama and Tom.
Walter Ellenson. Excuse me? Thank you. There are going to be fireworks tonight. You excited? Yeah. I'll be excited if Mama ever gets back here with more beer. Uh, second that. What are you doing home? Where is he? Where's who? Tom. Tom? He's not here. Somebody called the office. Said they saw a man who looked like Tom carrying a gun and heading toward the back basement door. That's ridiculous. Oh, Walter, nobody's here. Hey, y'all. You want to go see some fireworks? Kids wouldn't let me alone, so I decided to go. What's going on? Go on, get out of here. Oh, Walter, put that gun away. Quiet. I'm going around back. You stay here. Stay back here. You stay here, okay? In the basement?
Walter Allenson? Walter Allenson, this is the police. If anyone's in the basement, I need you to come on out into the light with your hands in the air. Touch anything. Let's seal this place off. Set up a perimeter. We'll call it in. Let's go. What's going on? Yeah. Pat, where's Tom? Tom? Oh, uh, he wasn't feeling well. He walked home. What's wrong, Dan? Dan, what's going on? It's Walter and Carolyn have been shot. They're both dead. What? <laughs> We're looking for Tom. Oh, um, uh, but he, he's at home. He wasn't feeling well. But Dan, you don't think he has anything to do with it. Dan, you know he has nothing to do with this. both your hands, Tom. What are you talking about, man? What the hell is all this? Where you been, Tom? I've been here. It's your mom and dad, they both been shot. Dad? What? Mr. Allison. Walter and Carolyn have both been shot and killed. What? Charged? <laughs> You're gonna have to come with me. I gotta bring you in for questioning. You're dead? No, oh, I don't know you. I gotta tell my wife. I gotta tell. I gotta bring you in, Tom. Dan, give us a minute. Grandpa, I gotta go with Dan down the station. The tension between you and your father is well known. Your good friend here says he saw a man fit in your description fleeing near the scene. It's the truth, Tom. Man your size, your build, come running out of the woods. There's a lot of men my size. One or two my daddy might have even crossed. But you can't account for your whereabouts, except that you walked home? That's right. Right before the fireworks. Why on earth would you do that? I told you I was alone with Pat, and I wasn't feeling well. And your wife, she didn't drive you home? Didn't want her to miss the fireworks. I'll just scrape your hand there. I took a shortcut. I jogged some. That's why I took a shower. So you weren't feeling well, but you jogged. We found your clothes in the washing machine. You always wash your clothes the minute you get in? Sometimes. Look, I didn't kill my mom and daddy. That's the God's honest truth. Dan. What happened in that basement, Tom? Where's Tom? Oh, they won't let me see him. It's okay. Did they hurt you? They think I did it. Oh, 
Don't you say anything more. We're gonna get an attorney. I'm gonna fix this. What's she doing here? When Walter yelled up from the basement, he said, I got him cornered, I got Tom. That's not what you told me at the house, Angela. Well, I was a little freaked out. I'm just saying that's what I heard. Now you're absolutely sure that he said Tom? Carolyn, stay back! I have him cornered! Angela. That's what he said, all right. Tom Allenson? You're under arrest for the murder of Walter and Carolyn Allenson. No. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. She's lying. Mrs. Allenson. Detective, you do not know this woman. She lies about Tom all the time. She is trying to frame him. She wants shot at him with a 357. Dan, you tell her. She's the one that you should be questioning. She is not the suspect, Mrs. Allenson. You get her out of here. Come on, get her out of here. It's going to be fine. Come on. It's going to be fine. The DA has built a very strong case, Tom. They found the shotgun that killed your father 20 yards from where your friend, Deputy Dan Hollister, said he saw a man, fitting your description, run away from the scene. Well, he'll never testify to that. They're best friends. He's going to. The fact that they are best friends makes it much more compelling to a jury. But there's no forensic evidence linking Tom to the gun, no, no residue on Tom's hands. He took a shower when he got home. He washed his clothes. There are no prints on the gun because it was wiped clean. Quite frankly, Tom, your version of what happened that night isn't strong. But it's the truth, Mr. Gilbert. Truth is what we can prove to 12 people who'd rather be somewhere else. It has nothing to do with what really happened. things in our favor. Your daddy had a lot of enemies. Now, this is the man who threatened him outside his office. He's out on bail and he hasn't been found. Well, there you go. It's not that simple. It might be enough to create reasonable doubt in a jury, but our biggest hurdle is Angela. She's gonna testify you were in that house. I said it before, Mr. Gilbert, that woman should be the focal point of this case. She manipulated Walter and Carolyn using those two children of hers. Walter's will has been amended. She is going to get a large sum of money. Now, if that isn't motive, I don't know what is. All right, the DA's looking into it. So are we. You gotta understand, though. They feel they got the right man. It's gonna be an uphill battle. This must be for you. Tom feels so terrible that you have to go through this, but he needs you to know that he's innocent. We know that, dear. I spoke to Mr. Gilbert today, and he seems to be closing in on some of the suspects while they're even investigating Angela. No, they're not. Detective Edwards called. Fax this over from Walter's attorney. Walter. Changed his will. Angela got nothing. Her kids receive a small trust, but nothing to her. Did Angela know this? She's known for some time. She agreed to it. And Tom? Tom gets nothing. It was written out of Walter's will. The rest of the estate goes to us. Blood money. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want anything to do with it. Well, we can certainly use some of that money. We need $5,000 at the end of the month to pay the mortgage. We haven't decided about any of that yet. 
Oh, I hope you understand, dear. Money for my son's death, it, it, it just wouldn't be right. No, of course not. I understood perfectly. Without that money, I would lose the house. I would lose everything. They weren't wrong. It was blood money. But now, with a single stroke of a pen, my home was gone. All of it. I'm gonna go upstairs for a little bit. I'm just so tired. Take care, dear. Mm. They were salivating, all of them. It was the perfect soap opera playing out right in their own backyard. What does friendship mean at that point? What is loyalty? They wanted to believe Tom was guilty. They welcomed it. I thought I had friends. I had nothing. They found him in Tennessee. Wasn't even in South Carolina the night of the murders. He has a strong alibi. Well, there's other men who wanted to see Walter dead. What about what about uh, Dan Halster when he showed Tom that letter? Or, or the man who, who shot up the car? None of them hold up. This Edgar fellow was our best hope. All the evidence points to you, Tom. You know, most of it's circumstantial, but it's enough. What do you suggest? Plead to a lesser charge. Don't let this go to trial. No, out of the question. Tom, as your attorney, it's my obligation to protect you from the laws we'll best apply in the case. You listen to me very carefully, Mr. Gilbert. Tom is innocent. You will prove that to a jury. There is no alternative. That is your obligation as our attorney. Tom's attorney? No, Mr. Gilbert. Our attorney. What are they offering? Tom. Pat, let me get a word in here. What are they offering? Manslaughter. Ten years. Six with good behavior. Now, I know juries. I know them well. And I know what's in this one's head even before the trial starts. And I want you to put Tom up on the stand so he can tell his story. And tell them what? That he can't account for his whereabouts until 30 minutes after the murders. That all the witnesses are lying, including his best friend. That he didn't mean it when he threatened to kill his father in front of the man's secretary and sister. They'll believe him. The prosecution will lead him alive. I'm telling you. Take the deal. If you don't, you'll spend the rest of your life in jail. I've seen it. I know it. I'd like the moment with my husband in private. Tom? Give us a minute, Mr. Gilbert. Maybe Mr. Gilbert's right. Tom, if you take that deal, it is no different than admitting that you did it. Don't you see that? It's not just the jury inside that courtroom. It's what's outside the courtroom. It's the whole town, everybody. Ten years, we go by fast. <laughs> we'll still be young, we'll still be together. Ten years is a lifetime. We could beat this. Then we're free. Hmm? Do you trust me? Uh, yeah. I do. We won't be taking the deal, Mr. Gilbert. It wasn't a good decision. I can admit that now. They didn't care about the truth. 
It's not about the truth. It was a game. Winning and losing, and no attorney wants to lose. They all want the headline. Doesn't matter whose life is at stake, whose life is ruined. He was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years. They took him from me. I promised I'd fix it and I didn't. Looking back, I don't think I ever forgave myself for that. Give me a big hug and I'll give you a treat, huh? <laughs> so good to see you. Oh, you little varmint. Let me give you a hug. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, sis. Oh, what's going on? Phil took the promotion in Denver. I didn't think he'd leave. I guess he just... It was all too much for him. Oh, that's probably all for the best, baby. Anyway, I thought you could use the company. Every time I close my eyes, we're together. Nothing's ever gonna change that. Sugar. I went to the bank today, and they refused to extend me any more money. I don't know what I'm supposed to do anymore. Baby, it's time to sell the house. That house is the only thing that I've ever had that's ever been truly mine. Just once, I want to hold on to something. My grandparents have already taken out loans to pay the lawyer. They don't actually see my daddy's money for months, maybe longer. Any extra we have has got to go towards my appeal. Mr. Gilbert isn't confident that he's going to be able to get an appeal from a judge. I don't think he ever believed us. He's just like all the other ones. Hey, hey stay strong. I need you to get along with him. <sighs> okay? You no? Know, he's the only friend we got. Please. I'm trying, Sugar. Lord knows I'm trying. The bank called. They won't extend another loan. They're gonna start foreclosure proceedings in 30 days if I don't come up with something. And the credit card companies, they keep on calling and bothering me. I'm at my wit's end. Did you tell George? George doesn't want to be burdened with it. He only just sits in there despondent. George won't even leave the house with all the gossip. Things people are saying. He can't go into town without a sideways glance. And Wade wouldn't take my check at the mark today. I've known that man my entire life. The people you think are your friends. Pat, I could help out. Oh, Rachel, I don't want your money. I'm just glad you're here. I couldn't do this on my own. Hey, hey, not 
Not, not in the house. Take it outside, okay? The boy grabs on. Good boy. Now that we've got some lunch. Hi. Mm. We've made you some soup. Ooh. There you go. Oh. I don't feel very hungry. Oh, it's good. Thank you. We have a nice ham and cheese for you today. That's on the menu. There you go. Oh. oh. Thank you. <laughs> I uh, spoke to Mr. Gilbert today. He's been working on an appeal. He went on and on about all this technical stuff that the judge did wrong. So, oh, would you like a little sweet tea? That would be nice. Hmm? Good? All right. Right up. Let me do that. Oh, no, I'm fine, Rachel. Pat. Really, Rachel, I'm okay. I have it. You should go check on Jeremy. Went outside a little bit ago. Truly. So nauseous. Yeah. Want me to get you something? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, dear. I just want to go to sleep. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry to be such a burden. Uh -uh. You have enough to worry about. No, no, no. You're never a burden to me. Not you <laughs> or George. Now you just feel better. Hmm? Take a little nap. It'll make you feel much better. Thank you, dear. George, made you some more sweet tea. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah, it's so thick you could hardly breathe. It's like the world just sucked up all the air right over here, right over Glenwood. You've been through more than any of us. You and Nona. Walter. Walter's my son. You may not have been liked. And I know how he treated you and Tom. But he was still my son. Someone killed him. Yes. Oh, George. You're all bottled up inside. Two people are dead. My grandson's in prison. All anyone seems to care about is the money. I, I don't understand. Oh, I didn't mean to go on about it the other night, George. I'm sorry. No, 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 not you, Pat. Not you or Tom. No. You can 
bet Darlene's gonna go after everything. She's never been much of a daughter to you and Nona. You need to amend your will so you protect yourself. Well, it's none of my business. Walter used to handle all of that. <laughs> well, I can make a call for you if you like. I know a lawyer. I'm sure if I asked him to do me a favor, he would. I don't want to put that on you, Pat. Oh, I don't mind, George. If you would, it would help. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't stop. No, I, I feel so sluggish. I, I can't shake this boat. All right, let me help. I can. <sighs> they denied your appeal. You told me you were going to fix this. I did everything I could. I feel like the whole world is just crashing down all around us. I, I can't take it anymore. Do you remember when we first met? <laughs> I'll stand next to that old wishing well. Last time in my pocket, I threw it down there. What'd you wish for? For you. <laughs> that was a good day, wasn't it? There'll be more good days. We'll keep fighting. You want men to live like this? Like a caged rat. Oh. Your affection's back, isn't it? Fine. Our souls are connected forever. You believe that, don't you? I do. Then there's only one way for us to be together. Our perfect love is bound by all eternity. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. your Bible. And I want you to read it, sugar, for us. Rachel. What brings you out here? Uh, I was just, uh, come by with some information on that job you were asking about. It's, uh, it's clerical mostly, so it's not much pay, but, but they do have a space for Jeremy, so he wouldn't have to rely on, uh, daycare or Debbie. Thanks. That's, um... Sure. Sweet. Well, it's a good excuse to come by and say hello, you know? Listen, Rachel, I know this is awkward. Me being one of those who put Tom away, and there is enough gossip in this town to fill a hen house. I mean, I just want you to know you got friends. Thank you, Dan. You're very sweet, Dan. Rachel! George! Oh, George! George! He's breathing. It was a heart attack. He's in a coma. Hey. Hi. How 
is it? No change. How's Nona? I don't really think she understands what's going on. Jeremy just went down for a nap. His mom's still there. I'm worried about her, Debbie. You know, Mama, she's a caretaker. She's gonna take care of everyone else first. Yeah, no, it's not just that. Have you noticed she's been acting strange lately? You know, like, not herself. Like what? Never mind. Um, hey, thanks for covering. You want to stay over? And now I'm actually going to go meet some friends. But um, I'll give you a call tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. See ya. right here. Oh, of course. Do you mind doing me a favor? I forgot Nona's prescription is in town. I can't bear the thought of driving back. Do you mind? Uh, actually, I just put a pizza in the oven for Jeremy, so... Um... Well, I can give it to him when it's ready. I I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. It's your sister, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Making my parents sick. Now, how's she doing? Medication? Something else? She won't get away with it. Or, or maybe you're all in it together. My sister sacrificed everything to take care of your parents. And for what? For being humiliated and rejected by your family? For having to bear what people say behind your back? Or for being more of a daughter to Nona and George than you ever were? And you have the gall to say something so awful. You are despicable. They never really found out how your older brother Glenn died, you know. He died in a car accident. That's what they told everyone. Suicide. Or so they said. You were too young to remember this, but Pat hated your brother. Thought he got too much attention from Mommy. Everybody knows Pat wants all the attention to herself. Pat. Pat. 
you get the prescription? Yeah. Saw Tom's Aunt Darlene. She said something really awful. She said that uh, Glenn didn't die in a car accident. Is that true? My brother shot himself. Suicide is a stain that doesn't wash away easily in a town like this. People could be so judgmental. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't think it was fair to Glenn. I loved him more than anyone would ever know. I didn't want you or anyone else to think less of him. Well, she also said it seemed like maybe it was more than just suicide. Well, Darlene is a hateful, spiteful woman. She always has been. So she lied? Of course she lied. That's what she does. Darlene lies. I'm sure if you want to look at the coroner's office, they have the report. Maybe you could look at the autopsy photos while you're at it. I just don't like secrets, Pat. Fine. No more secrets. Hey, let, let me do that. Why don't you rest? I'll take down her food. She seems better today. Well, if she doesn't eat, she's going to get worse. Just let me do it. Rachel, please. I have a system. I have a routine. Fine. What is our most primal instinct? Food? Shelter? Companionship? No. Survival. Survival of the fittest. Do not judge me. It's within each of us when we need it. No, no. I was wondering where you were. I don't like being alone. How you feeling? Better, I think. Yes. You haven't eaten anything. I just don't have any appetite. Have you talked to the doctors? How is my George? Nona, it is very important that you eat something. I'm not hungry. Well, I made you my special soup. I am just not hungry, dear. Sweetheart. Just a little something to make you feel better. Uh, 
Show you something. He unzipped his pants and he exposed himself. You ever touch my wife again, and I will kill you. The damn whore. Ah! Ah! I will not live like everybody else. I will not be like everybody else. We are better than that. What happened in that basement, Tom? You're under arrest for the murder of Walter and Carolyn Allenson. We could beat this. Tom gets nothing. The rest of the estate goes to us. Made you some more sweet tea. Thank My mama died when I was 24. She was my whole world. When I used to see people with both of their parents alive, I'd burn with envy. George and Nona made me feel like I was their own. I loved them. That's the God's honest truth. George Allenson's daughter, Darlene. She thinks Pat Allenson killed her mother, Nona, and is doing the same thing to George. Wants to file a formal complaint. Oh, no indication of foul play. You want my opinion? Pat's hands aren't clean. George was as fit as Knox, right up till about the time they moved in. Nona was holding her own pretty good, too. She went downhill real fast. Who stands to benefit if he dies now? Darlene? She was cut out of the will. I want to talk to George's attorney. Call the hospital. I want to get the results from George's blood work. Okay, you got it.
It's like I'm having some weird dream. And I just want to wake up and have everything the way it was, but it isn't a dream. And there isn't any waking up. And he was responsive? Okay. That's been confirmed then. Thank you. George Allenson's will was amended three times in the last month. It names Pat and Tom as both primary beneficiaries and co-executors, which means she controls everything as long as Tom's in jail. We gotta get to the hospital. Why? George came out of his coma. That was his doctor. It wasn't a heart attack. He was poisoned. The doctor will begin to check on you in a bit. Thank you. George? I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. We thought we had lost you. The doctor said... Thought you'd be rid of me. Oh, what are you talking about? I know about Nona. Dan. Dan Hollister? The doctor told him. Said they found arsenic in me. Say I've been poisoned. Are you family? Yes, I am. Is he going to be all right? He's gonna live. Frankly, I don't know how he's still alive. You're made of some strong southern stock, Mr. Allenson, that's for sure. I don't understand. He said that there was arsenic in his system. How's that possible? There is arsenic in his system. It doesn't go away. Small doses can affect a person gradually, and the symptoms are masked by other common ailments, rarely detected. But whoever did this got a little overzealous. <laughs> whoever did this? Aren't you jumping to conclusions? I had arsenic poison and once from contaminated water. Not at these levels. This man was poisoned. George, there is no possible way you were poisoned. This doesn't make any sense. Does. Does to the sheriff. Would you mind stepping out while I examine Mr. Allenson? I'll be just outside, George. Don't worry. Hmm? I'm Deputy Hollister. This is Detective We need to see George Allenson, please. Can you tell us what we need to see? One moment. Want to check for me? I just heard he's okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to see him right away. I'll be right back, okay? He's okay. Are you sure about this? We'll do further tests, but it's quite conclusive. Although arsenic is rare these days. Where the hell do you even find arsenic? I still use it to treat heartworm. Horses. George, do you have any idea when you might have ingested this? Who prepares your meals? Pat does all the cooking. As ever since we moved in. Up. What on earth for? What, what's going on here? What, what are you fixing to shoot me? You are under arrest. Dan? Pat, you do what he says now. This is just insane. Just do insane. not move! Put your hands up! Whatever it is you think I've done, you've got it wrong. You are making hey, a terrible mistake. Rachel, you stay where you are. Rachel, please call Patrick Gilbert right now. Dan, let her go. Please, you are making a terrible mistake. They found the arsenic in the stable pad. It was not mixed for heartworm treatment or anything else. And they have a witness who says he sold it to you. Look, 
They're going to charge you with two counts of criminal intent to commit murder. You could spend a good portion of your life in jail. Now, they might be willing to make a deal. My answer is spelled with two letters, Mr. Gilbert. N O. faces now. Come on. This isn't what it seems. Mr. Gilbert said they may offer you a deal. An admission of guilt. Now, you don't for a second believe I actually did it, do you? Of course not. These bottom feeders have no interest in the truth. This whole town, every last one of them is corrupt. It'll be a miracle if I get a fair trial at all. But I will fight. I was fight. Come on now. It's going to be fine. Now I love Nona and George as if they were my own. I would never hurt them. You do believe that, don't you? I know. I believe you, Mama. My instincts prove right about the good people of this county. It wasn't a fair trial at all. They had their minds made up in the newspapers and gossip circles. They shuffled people's lives as if they were cards in a poker game. It's impossible to win with the deck stacked against you. Truth and justice. Pined over by idealists who preach it from pedestals and carve it into granite. Justice isn't about truth. It's about the perception of truth. Perception is what you want it to be. Those people wanted me guilty. It was hard to imagine then that I would never speak to my Tom again. After I was sentenced, he was granted a divorce. Said he was going to forget that we were ever married. Glenwood, everything it represented, gone. All that was left of my life were ashes of a dying ember. But I think what hurt most of all was knowing what Tom thought of me. What everyone did. What they're all saying behind my back. It was just about enough not to want to go on. But I did, like I always do. Seven years. Tom was seven years younger than me. People used to mock us. Seven years. I didn't think that was hardly any time at all. Good to see you. Oh, don't look at me. I look. Are you good? No, I look like a mess. Oh, look, Jeremy made you a sign. Oh, oh my goodness! This is Jeremy. Who is this little man? I can't believe it. I know it's not much, but I uh, put some of your photos up and some other things. Oh, it's just fine. It's 
Good to have you home, sis. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, it's nothing. I mean, it's just me and Jeremy, and we have the spare room, so. But you let me stay here, and I don't think I ever properly thanked you the whole entire time I was there. You did visit me more than anyone else. I don't think Debbie knew how to handle it. She made some bad choices. It's all my fault, but you've always been there for me, and I do appreciate it. You're my sister. You. Oh, you are too sweet. Now, are you sure it's okay that I'm borrowing your car? It's fine. I've got a ride. <sighs> as soon as I make a little, then I'll get something for my own. And thank you so much for letting me borrow these. I, I... You look great. Yeah? I feel fat as a cow. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, I'm curious. This job, they, they assigned it to you? Mm-hmm. Oh, my hair look dumb? Pat! I want to look half as good as you do at my age. You look great. I mean, I'm just surprised. I mean, a nurse? State agency assigned it. I imagine they know what they're talking about. Besides, it's not a nurse. It's in-house care. I used to help with Mama all the time at the hospital with people, so it shouldn't be that hard. It's a job. You should be happy for me. I am. I'm really proud of you. <sighs> I'm really proud of you, sis. Oh. You're going to be great. You're going to be great. Pat? Hello. I'm Jennifer. Come in. How do you do? Oh, what a beautiful home you have. Thank you. A lot of care went into it. <laughs> we'll go in here. All right. Mm. Please, have a seat. All right. Uh, brought you the credentials you were asking about. Thank you. That certification is current? Yes, ma'am. I've been out of work for a while, taking care of my family. I'm not going to show you after that. I'm up for anything. <laughs> my husband, Charles, is partially paralyzed because of a spinal injury. He has limited use of his arms and no use of his legs. We were in a car accident about a year ago, and I'm no longer able to care for him the way I would like. I have a heart condition. Believe it or not, it's been rather difficult to find someone. It's not about the money, it's just that my husband can be difficult to deal with. Charles, this is Pat. She's going to be helping us out around here a little bit. Hey. Not interested. Honey, maybe if you just gave her a chance, she could make things easier for you. <laughs> Can you make me walk or sit up or take a piss on my own? No. But I can take a little of the burden off your wife. She deserves that, doesn't she? He can be like that. It's hard to get close to him. Sometimes he's not very nice at all. Well, he's been through a lot. Yes, well, so have I. And he tends to forget that. Mm. So do a lot of people. Anyway, if you're interested, the job is yours. I usually have a pretty good instinct about people, and I rather like how you handle them in there. <laughs> Thank you. I have a few errands that I need to run. Of course. So I have a list here for you. Mm, no problem. Why is it that God shines his brightest on so few and leaves the rest living in their shadows? I was not born for that. I was not destined to live in the shade. I was meant to feel the warmth of the sun in all its entirety. What the hell are you doing? You need sunshine. 
Why she has you in the coolest part of the room is beyond me. She thinks it's torture for me to see what I've been missing. Like I don't know. It's so beautiful outside. <sighs> oh. oh, Mr. Green, I'm not gonna bat you. Massage releases toxins, reduces stress. Oh my, you are knotted up like bundled rope. When was the last time someone did this? I can't remember anyone ever doing it. Oh, come on, not even your wife? <sighs> no. It's none of my business, but I don't understand that. Did she tell you I was a pain in the ass? You were just angry at the world. How perceptive. Life is a gift, Mr. Green. No matter what hand you dealt. And you've been given a bad hand. That's for sure. But it's up to you how you play it. Now, if there's anything you need, anything at all, you just ask. What are we doing out here? I told you I like being inside. It's a beautiful day. And enjoy it on your break. Somewhere, somebody in this world would give anything for another day. Let's try and enjoy the one we've been given. Hmm? He seems to know you. He should. We used to ride almost every day. What's his name? Magic. Oh, magic. Oh, pretty boy. He hasn't quite figured out why I've abandoned him. Neither have I. Maybe because I can't ride? You have much more to offer than you think, Mr. Green. <laughs> he obviously loves you. Why don't you just love him back? Miss you, boy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this happened. Would you like to write? Oh. Oh, my. Oh. I couldn't pose. It's not an imposition. He needs attention. Affection. He shouldn't be put out to pasture just yet. Mr. Green. Call me Charles. Mr. Green makes me feel old. I haven't been down here in months. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Green. Charles. <laughs> Charles. You're welcome, Charles. Oh, hi. Show me where she is,
I thought that you uh, broke up with Derek. Oh, my. Well, I, I, I can't keep track of them all. Mm. I did. Ten minutes before he hit me. Oh, Debbie. Stop. Mama, just stop. You have no right to lecture me. You know, it wasn't an easy seven years for me either. Rachel had her own life. I didn't have anybody. I'm sorry, baby. I never meant to hurt you. I'm gonna do better by you. I promise. Oh, look at you, you're such a beautiful girl. I think you should try this on. Huh? I think it's look real cute on you. I can't afford that one. Oh, come on now, be my treat. You know, I was thinking, why don't you come and work with me? Great. Minimum wage? No, a little more than that, smarty pants. You serious? Yes, I'm serious. Why not? It'd give us a chance to spend some more time together. Mrs. Green, she could be a little bit difficult, but I'm sure the two of you would get along just fine. I've already told them I'm going to hire someone. Oh, come on. It would be fun. Oh, they have such a beautiful estate. Hmm? All right. Yeah? Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't believe she shows her face in the You have a problem? Oh, come on. Just ignore them. <laughs> I was so fat I couldn't put on my pants. <laughs> hey, how is it going with Debbie? You know, at first I was hesitant because you know your niece, but she has been so wonderful. Yeah? I, I don't think I could do without her, especially with Mrs. Green being so sick. I didn't know Mrs. Green was sick. Mm, oh, he has terrible heart problems. It's really very serious. See the earrings Mama got me? Real diamonds. Oh, those are uh, look expensive. I told you that's all she would notice. I, I just don't see how you can afford that. Well, if you must know, I got you a little something, too. It was supposed to be a surprise. I'll get it right now. Jeremy dinner. It's just like an early Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, now, don't say a word. I can get you a little present if I want to without feeling guilty. Lift up your hair. Yeah, well, I know what your kind of job pays, and it does not pay for this. Uh, Why do you got to be like that? I'm not being like anything. I have a right to ask, where did you get the money for this? Rachel, I do not like what you're insinuating. I happened to get a raise, if you must know. And that cost me everything that I had. It's just a little token of my appreciation. Mama, what's wrong? It's nothing. It's just, um, my infection is acting up a little bit again. I didn't want to worry you about it. Well, I think we all know what's caused by stress. I think I need to go upstairs for a bit. Y'all start without me. I've lost my appetite anyway. Why do you have to be such a bitch sometimes? Debbie. Have a nice dinner. Still think she poisoned Tom's grandparents? Yes. Absolutely. She went to jail for it, Rachel. Look, I'm sorry. I know that's your sister. No, no, it's not that. Me. It's just that I mean, she's working as a private nurse. What? You know, it's it's nothing. I'm just being paranoid. I, I gotta get back to work. Okay, but thank you for the coffee. Okay, sure. Hey, can I give you a call sometime? Or? Yeah, but um. All my cell, Pat, Pat wouldn't approve. All right. I'm, I'm going to walk with you because I'm going this way anyway. So. Okay. As I told you before, this job isn't just about caring for Charles. This room 
hasn't been dusted for a week. I'll do it right now. I watch the two of you. I see how you and Charles interact. You're here as a nurse, not as a psychiatrist. Why? I don't think he needs a psychiatrist. You're suddenly an expert on what it is that he needs. Well, maybe he just needs to be treated the way he used to be. You don't know anything about us. Or who he used to be. No. No, of course not. I... Of course not. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean... I, I would never... Of course, it's none of my business. But I have to say, I do think he wants to feel alive. He's dying. His doctors say he may have five years. Please. It was a drunk driver. He hit us head on. We didn't even see him coming. He got nine months in jail, and now he's at college playing football. And here we are. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're helping Charles. I can see that. I can't. And that's hard for me. That doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you human. He is still my husband. Try to remember that. I have some groceries <clears throat> I need you to pick up. Plus a few other things. I'm gonna get you to fill in the rest. I'm gonna go upstairs and lie down. I feel like I have a bit of a headache. Mm. Thank you. You will. Thanks for letting Jeremy stay over. I'll um, pick him up tomorrow at 10. Okay, bye. What you doing in here? Oh, I, I, was, I was just, um, I was looking for the extra set of car keys. You never put them back. Why, well, they're in the hall, on the hook, plain as day. Oh, oh. well, I, I shouldn't have pried. I, I just should have waited. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have anything to hide. <laughs> Look at you. You're all jumpy like a little Mexican bean. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. I love your skirt. Uh, you were you were right blind as a bat. <laughs> they were right there. I brought us dinner from Soup House. 
Oh, you know, I'm not really hungry. I'm just really tired. I think I'm gonna go have a bath. We never get to spend any time alone together anymore. Come on, it's your favorite. <laughs> I'll go fix it right up. Aren't you hungry? It's Chinese egg drop, your favorite. A little salty. Use a little pepper, don't you think? Yeah, a little. Well, they always do that here. Let me put a little pepper in there. There you go. Thank you. That should be better. I don't know why they always do that, huh? So sick last night. You scared me half to death. I came home, you're crumpled up on the floor. Don't you remember me putting you in the bed? No, no. Yeah. I called Soup House. They had some other complaints. So much for our favorite restaurant. Here, baby, drink some of this. You go, darling. Come on, little sip. Isn't it? Yeah, apparently so. The doctor said the best thing for you to do is to stay in bed and plenty of liquids. Oh, I don't want to stay in oh, bed. Oh, no, 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 sweetie, you... You got a bad man. Now, don't you worry. I'm going to take care of you. Where's Jeremy? He's at his friend's house. Arranged everything. Now you go back to sleep, okay? Don't worry. been taking your medication? Yes, of course I have. Well, I think I'd better call the doctor. <sighs> I just don't understand it. I haven't felt like this for ages. Not since I've been taking my current medication, anyway. Well, you've been taking care of Mr. Green for so long, and now that there's help, your body's just paying you back is all. You have a kind heart but also a delicate one. You're very sweet. Thank you, both of you. Would you like me to get you some tea? Yes, lovely. Thank Come you. right up. Right, go. Is Jennifer okay? Yes, the doctor says she's gonna be just fine. She needs to rest, no excitement. You taking a heart medication? Yes. Now I need you to relax. The two of you are gonna give each other a heart attack, all the fretting you do.
Get in the bed right now. Come on, this second. Very sick. Come on now. I need my purse. No, look at you walk around with your socks on too. What am I gonna do with you? Come on. I see, I see my purse. Hey, you're delirious. Come on now. Come on, I left it right. I left it. The phone isn't working. I know. I called the phone company. It went out last night. Oh, do you need to call someone? I might. Is that okay? You are burning up. I need to see a doctor. Food poisoning wouldn't last this long. Oh, no, no, no. You know what we need to do for you? Make your mama special remedy. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I didn't know you still lived in Monticello. Yeah, I moved back a while ago. I'm here to see Rachel. Rachel? Are you two friends? I've been calling her cell for the past two days. I was worried. Worried about what? Can I see her? She's not feeling well. She's in bed. Well, I'd like to see her just the same. You're not welcome here, Dan. Well, it's up to Rachel now, isn't it? It is still her house, right? Do you have wax in your ears, Dan Hollister? You're not welcome here. Look. All right. Or just tell her I stop by then. You do that for me. What's that, Dan? Would you mind telling me what that's all about? Have you been seen him behind my back? That's my business, Pat. No. It's the whole town's business. You don't think they're talking about it? You don't think they're laughing at us behind our backs? How could you disrespect me like that? I'm not the one who went to prison. That man destroyed my life. He put his best friend behind bars and he took him away from me. Don't you see that? All I have is you and Debbie and Jeremy. When Mama died, it felt like the whole world opened up and fell out from behind my feet. She was always there for me, no matter what. If something ever happened between us, I don't know what I would do. Someone like Dan, all he's gonna do is come between us. Can't you see that? Oh, you are burning up. Come on now, you, you've got to get back into bed. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's a good girl. Get you into bed. Lay now, all nice and cozy. Yeah. Now drink this. I don't want your help. You don't know what you're saying. I'll make you some more once you've calmed down a bit. I'll go pick up Jeremy now. You know, it wouldn't kill you to show some gratitude for all the help that I'm showing with your son and everything else around here. Hello, Dr. Corbin. 
department's office. Well, preliminary tests show no toxins. More detailed blood work will take time, but... Well, what's wrong with me? Why am I so sick? Everything's pointing to the flu. The terrible strain going around. Violent, quick, just like you described. Fluids and rest are your best weapon. I got married. Married? Friend from one of our kids, Becky Swanson. Yeah. And she, uh, she wrote me when this first happened. Why don't you come down and visit? Hoping to get out real soon. It's great, Tom. I'm real happy for you. So what you doing here? I've had some questions. About Pat? I'm sure you know she's out by now and living with me and Jeremy. I guess I don't even really know what I want to ask. When she went to prison, I chose to believe her, you know, that this was all just a terrible mistake. I really want to talk about this, Rachel. Yeah, but now I'm not so sure it was. You know, I'm starting to wonder if maybe she had something to do with that night that your mom and daddy were killed. Don't make a damn bit of difference now. I made myself promise a long time ago never to go back to that night. I understand, Tom, but, um... I got my own reasons I need to know. What happened to my grandparents, I can't rightfully know for sure. The court says she did it. She said she didn't have one friend on that jury. Well, that may be the case. But what I can tell you about Pat... But she has a way of making you believe what she wants you to believe. No matter what your gut's telling you otherwise. Hell, it's like its own, own kind of poison. Except you don't know you're sick. Beautifully. Oh, no, it's all him. He's yours anytime. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you hear that? <laughs> There's something else I want to show you. Come on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Sometimes I just grab Jennifer and we get in the car and just drive. Didn't matter where we were going. You see the key panel? Go over and open it. That old bomb you're driving is not going to last much longer. I'd like you to drive one of mine. Oh, Charles. <laughs> oh, Charles, I couldn't. <laughs> Nonsense. They're not being used. Car needs as much attention as a quarter horse. Whichever one you like. How about the Mercedes? Perfect. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh. Charles, there's something I, I need to tell you. Okay. It's about my past. I don't want to know. Well, I, I think you should know because... People might say things about me. Things that aren't true. Lies that have haunted me for years. I was in prison. They accused me of things that I didn't do. They said I hurt people that I love very much. I told you I don't want to know. Why not?
You scared me. What are you doing? Nothing, just putting some clothes away. Where's your mother? Outside, I think. <laughs> Mrs. Green, are you, are you okay? Where's Charles? Hmm? I want you out of this house. You've been writing texts to yourself. My account is short $40,000. What else have you been stealing from my house? Huh? I can't believe I could have trusted either of you. I'm calling the police. Mrs. Green, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure there's some sort of an explanation. I would... Oh, Mrs. Green! Oh, my goodness. De Debbie! Debbie! Get over here! Pills. It's okay. Come on now. Get up, Pills. You're getting all crazy. You're making yourself sick. Let me get you upstairs. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be just fine. What's going on? Jennifer! She fainted. We're gonna take her upstairs for a bit. Charles, it's a piece of women. Yes, that's it's right. her heart. You. You've got to call the doctor. We're on our way. We're calling the doctor after we lay her down. Oh, my goodness. You're getting so heavy. Put you in the All right. Go. Oh, let's get these meds in here. Oh! Get all cozy. There you go. All right. Here's the book. Debbie, I need you to calm down. Calm down? She's gonna call the police. What are we gonna do? Well, well, we can't do anything about it now, can we now? I need you to go into town and pick up a prescription for Mrs. Green. Well, for? Because it's gonna take a doctor an hour to get it. Don't argue with me, Debbie. Go downstairs. It's in my purse. Thank you very much. Go on. Did you give her her pills? Yes, of course. This isn't the first time this has happened. There are three different pills. Charles? She, she needs to take all three. Yes, Charles, I know. I've given her all three pills. I've spoken to the doctor. And we are doing exactly what we should be doing now. I'm going to go check on her, all right? You okay? Yeah. All right. I'll be back.
can't get you anything. I should have taken her to the hospital right away. The doctor told me to wait. I shouldn't listen to him. Don't do that. I... Don't do that. The night of our accident, Jennifer left her purse inside. The 30 seconds it took for her to get it was the difference between that truck hitting us and not. She blamed herself for it. Guilt destroyed her. Destroyed us. So don't do it. It's not your fault. <sighs> you lost people close to you? More than I care to think about. get kind of numb to it after a while. I hate that. Yeah. That's how I feel. Numb. Hell, I don't have much time here myself. Maybe I'm just scared. Maybe it's my time, too. Please don't say that, Charles. Debbie, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. Mrs. Cream died, Mama. Well, she was sick. She practically did this to herself. She was so upset. You act like this doesn't even bother you. Oh. Well, because I'm not hysterical. I've lost a lot of people I've cared for. Yeah, we know that. I didn't mean that. No. Of course you didn't. Baby, I want you to think about something. Now, it's just awful. She was a lovely woman, but she knew. Oh, my God. No, listen to me. No, no you listen to me. What I mean is that may not be a bad thing. Now, I know how that sounds. But prison is not a place where you want to spend your time. Now, if anyone ever finds out about the money, or the jewelry, any of it, you and I will be spending time in prison. Do you understand that? We are in this together. Debbie? I get it. You're the only person I could ever trust with anything like this. I know this seems wrong on the surface. None of it would ever be missed. That's the only reason why. There's plenty. <laughs> she didn't even know it was gone. <sighs> oh, God. Your infection's back, isn't it? Yeah, it's nothing. Let me see. No, Debbie. Mom, I'm not going to take no for an answer. <sighs> You have to have somebody look at that. Oh, what? A doctor? They always say the same thing. They don't even know what they're talking about. Oh, baby. I know this has been difficult for you. We gotta stick together, okay? It's just you and me. You're my special pretty girl. I love you the most. Pat? This moment, when your own blood sees you as a monster, something sears through your soul. Everything I had done for her, 
nurtured her, raised her as my own daughter. It wasn't that moment, that split second. The Rachel I knew and loved died. Hey. He's up in my room watching a movie. He's fine. <sighs> That's so stupid. I just, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, it's my house and I just... I couldn't stay there, but I couldn't face her. Well, you're gonna be safe here. She lied to me. Everything she told me my whole life, a lie. I need to speak to Detective Edwards. I know she's lying about the money and the greens. Do you have his number? I actually just spoke to him about 20 minutes ago. And Rachel, Mrs. Green died this afternoon. Oh my God. Now, now, hold on, now, now listen to me here. I gotta tell you that the initial reports was that it was heart failure. You know, she's had a history of heart problems. But was she sick? The husband supports Pat's story. I mean, even the doctors are saying that Pat did everything she was supposed to do, so. Well, you think there's more to it? <laughs> I saw her cutting herself today. And what else is she capable of? According to Derek, who works in the DA's office, there's an official investigation into both of us now. Grand larceny and something about forged prescriptions. How'd you manage to get all this from your friend? What else do they know? Not enough for an indictment. Or even a warrant. Yet. He told me no one would ever find out. I swear to God, Mama, I'm not going to jail. I will not let that happen. Just keep working your friend, whatever it takes. Do you understand? What is that? A forgery. Pat used it to get her job with the Greens. Told them she was certified as a nurse. Can you arrest her on that? I could, but it would be a slap on the wrists. I want her for the murder of Jennifer Green, not for impersonating a nurse. I want all my ducks in a row before I move on this one. What about your blood work? It didn't show anything. And she's using something different. Something that doesn't show up on any normal test. We still have to explore the possibility that maybe she didn't kill anyone. And she didn't try and poison me. Your sister is a sociopath. It will stop at nothing to get what she wants. You think it's just a coincidence that you got sick once you started asking questions? What happened with the warrant? Search the Green estate. Judge denied it. Without a formal complaint from Charles Green, I got nothing to go on. She covered her tracks pretty good. Always did. She's smart. Okay. What do you want to do now? I have an idea about that. I still think she has something to do with the death of Walter and Carolyn. Maybe there's something there we can use. Well, Tom won't talk about it. He won't. Never has. Well, then he needs some convincing. I'd like to come with you. No, that's not a good idea. I just saw Tom. He trusts me. Maybe I can help. I told you what happened that night's behind me. It's my ride, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. But I just don't understand what kind of spell she has over you that makes you want to keep it bottled up for all these years. She has no spell over me, Detective. I know exactly who she is and what she did. I have my own demons to live with, and I'd just as soon keep them to myself. Do you have a picture of your new wife? Sure, I do. She's beautiful. Hope to get paroled in about a year. We're gonna be happy. You want Pat out there? Knowing you're happy. 
She's not gonna stop. How many more people need to get hurt, Tom? Tell us about that night. Tell us everything. I was with Pat in the truck. Don't stop now. Oh, what am I hurting you? Wasn't that his car? Going off to the office, like I said in your mama's letter. Who cares? Go on. Go back here. Go on. I wonder if she's at home. I said, he wouldn't like that. He wouldn't like her here by herself. I swear, he owns this whole town. I feel sorry for your mom. It's like he owns her, too. Listen, I know everything you've said, and I, and I know your reasons for it. And, but if we could just fix everything with your dad, if, if they could just help us a little bit, we could put everything in the past, and, and then we could start all fresh again. Babe. Hi. I don't know. I just... I got this feeling like something bad's gonna happen. What do you mean? Where, where are you going? I'm just gonna walk back to the house. It's only a couple miles. You go grab some beer and get back to the fireworks. Listen, I, I, I don't want to hear about all this bad thing happening. That's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's just your nerves talking. Listen. We could have our own place. We could live like real people. Please, you got to do this thing for me. So I did. Mama, I just need you to My mother was home just like the letter said she'd be. You want to go to the basement? Go on now. Hurry up. But it wasn't my mother who wrote that letter. It was Pat all along. She went through. A box of letters that my mom wrote to me while I was in school. She learned her handwriting and her signature to get me into that house on that night. Walter, what are you doing home? Where is he? I really didn't want a confrontation with my daddy. That's why I went down there to hide. Hey, y'all. You want to go see some fireworks? Kids wouldn't let me alone, so I decided to go. Walter, put that gun away. Quiet. So I hid inside that cold bed. There was a gun in there. 12 gauge shotgun. Leaning against the wall. I heard him coming down the steps. Then the door opened. I didn't think about it at the time. Things sometimes just make sense in the moment. One of daddy's guns, I guess. It's still a mystery why I was there in that spot. I was just gonna sneak out later. That's all I was gonna do. Walter! Carolyn, stay back! I have him cornered! Daddy, don't... <laughs> Daddy, stop! Walter! a miracle. I wasn't hit. Grace of God, I tell you that. 
I yelled stop, Daddy, but he just kept shooting. I didn't know what else to do. So I just picked up that gun. That fire. your car, Dan, and thinking you're already after me. Wondering how that could be. Hey! I just kept running and running. Until Pat came out of nowhere. She stopped me. It never occurred to me why. Why she was there, not back with the others. mention this to anyone. Do you hear me? Do you understand? Hey, hey, listen to me. I'm right here with you right now. If you mention that to anyone else that I was here, they're gonna send me to jail too. Do you want that? Do you want me in prison? Hmm? You think it's me? They're gonna know. No, 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 no. They're not gonna think it's you. Because you know why? Because you're going to deny everything. Do you understand that? It never happened. It's just a bad thought in your head. It's just like a bad dream. That's all. And as soon as you start believing that, everyone else will too. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Huh? Yes, okay. I love you. I love you. I love you more than life. All right. I'm going to make this right, okay? Do you believe me? Now, listen. Listen to me. You're going to go home, okay? You're going to take a shower. You're going to wash all your clothes. You're not going to talk to anyone. You're just going to act like nothing happened. Do you understand me? I swear. Okay? All right. Go. I love you. It's okay. It's okay. That was a bad day. Could have gone either way. Could have been me that got killed. Looking back on it, don't suppose it would have mattered to Pat. I was like a, a fly who fell in the spider's web. My daddy never exposed himself to her. My mom told me that he went out to Glenwood that day to show her photos of my kids. I want to show you something. It's still his responsibility. And I'm going to see to it that he lives up to that. I believed every word she told me. Still did for a long time. Always faking illness. Always making me feel like I wasn't a man for not standing up to daddy. I wouldn't be surprised if she was the one who got me fired just so I'd blame him or if she made that call that night. Tell my daddy that I was at the house. She built the keg and she filled it with powder. And then she sat back and waited for that fuse to be lit. And that fuse was lit on Memorial Day. You could have claimed self-defense, Tom. You'd be out of prison right now. I did what I did and I deserved what I got. In the end, I guess she got what she wanted. Pat always gets what she wants. There has to be something that we can use. I mean, she's an accessory to murder, right? Well, at the very least, she lied about seeing Tom that night. All we've got now is the testimony of the convicted felon. I'd hope for more. I'm sorry. Well, I promised myself I would never let my sister hurt anyone else, and I'm not stopping yet. What are you doing? 
That's your will. Amended will. When I'm gone, I want you to be taken care of. Oh, Charles. I don't care about any of that stuff. We all care about that. It's what I wanted to do. Oh. Oh. oh, Charles. I've often wondered if God watches our every move. If he judges us like the preachers say. If he does, then he knows why we do certain things. Others don't. They don't understand the why. Why is for the weak. Difficult choices are not. It's the strong who survive. And the strong don't need anyone. Not even God. Did you have a good time on Anthony's? I guess. See who was in the car? No, I didn't get a good look at them. I'm not sure, but I think it's Debbie's ex boyfriend's truck. You think she'd do something? Look, I don't know what to believe anymore. Just if they're trying to scare me, it's working, okay? Hey, would you stay here tonight? Yeah, of course. So I talked to my friend. Mm -hmm. Detective Edwards is at a dead end, but they're going to start working Mr. Green pretty hard. Oh, I'll handle him. What about Rachel? Oh, she doesn't have the stomach for this sort of thing. She'll get the message. Hey, Mr. Green? Well, Mr. Green, he's a little confused. He's not feeling very well. What do you mean? Well, he's not well at all. Hey, sweetie. Why is he sleeping here? He just wants to make sure that we're okay. But you don't need to worry, okay? We're fine. Hey, let's do something fun tomorrow. Just you and me. Whatever you want. Deal? Deal. Okay. Nate, sweetie. Sweet dreams. Oh my god, get out of the bed now! Did you get the plates? No. Listen, is there a friend you and Jeremy can stay with? Maybe somebody they don't know? Look, if you don't get anything on Pat, I will. This ends now. the end of the business day tomorrow. Is there anything else we can do? No, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely time overseas. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. You have a lovely day now.
She's using strychnine. Hold on. It says here strychnine can be injected intravenously. It causes convulsions, asphyxiation, paralytic effects such as heart failure, even in small doses. She probably forged a prescription. What should I do? Leave it exactly where you found it. There's something else. I found the prescription. The prescription's made out to Pat Allenson. Listen to me. Rachel, get out of there. What are you doing? Are you hearing me? Rachel? Rachel! Hollister, are you anywhere near the Green Estate? The Green Estate? Why? Rachel's in trouble. Get out there. Get out there now! Strychnine. Is that what you use? Is that what you used on me? Rachel, you're paranoid. Is that what you used on Mrs. Green? How many others, Pat? What about Mr. Green? Is he in danger? Why are you doing this to me? We're family. You're my sister. I love you. You don't love anyone but yourself. How can you say that to me after everything I've been through? You know, I've had a fight for everything I've ever had. What, by killing people? How could you poison me, Pat? You had the flu. Pat, put it down. Put it down right now. What's this? Are you okay, Rachel? Yeah. Rachel? Where's Charles Green? Oh, he, he's in his room. Great. Turn around, put your hands behind your head. Turn around now! Rachel? You're under arrest. How could you do this to me? It's a fine line between need and want. We need shelter. Food, companionship, but the things we want, well, that's what feeds our appetite. Our ego, our self-esteem. People used to say I was spoiled rotten from the day I was born, that I got everything I wanted. <laughs> that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I never got anything I wanted. They're offering her a deal. They'll close the book on the Allenson murders in exchange for a guilty plea to aggravated assault against Mr. Green. And his wife's body's been cremated, along with any evidence that she was poisoned. So we can't link Pat to her death. But they are throwing in a violation of a controlled substance and posing as a registered nurse for good measure. What about Debbie? Her probation. It's part of the deal. Pat's gonna plead to keep her out of jail. I'm standing here in front of the Sheriff's Department in Monticello County, where Pat Allenson recently pled guilty to crimes related to the poisoning of Mrs. Green and was sentenced today to eight years in prison. This will be Mrs. Allenson's second term in prison. Mrs. Green's husband, Charles, had no comment. I can't convince you to stay? No. Too many ghosts here. I gotta ask you, why Seattle? Because it never rains in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, come on, buckle up, kiddo. Well, send me a postcard, all right? Come visit. I just might do that. Terrible burden now, all of it, to be humbled and forgotten by everyone you knew. I only pleaded guilty to save my daughter. She hasn't spoken to me in eight years. I should have fought. I can see that now. 
but I also believe that the good Lord doesn't allow anything to chance, that I was meant to spend this time in prison. Just ask the warden and she'll tell you what a blessing it's been. Not just for me, but for all the other women that I've helped. I've been active in several programs and I, I really hope to continue to do that work. I've made mistakes. I've paid dearly for them. But I have paid. And that's the God's honest truth. My truth. I'm such a good girl. I got my hair up in curls, precious as pearls. I'm a good, good girl. I'm a good, good girl. Such a good, good girl. Never want to do bad, just want to love on my man. I'm just a good, good girl. Such a good, good girl.